Hi guys, this is Nandini at Surviving Medical School 101. Welcome back. This is going to be a series on what books, resources and methods I use to study the various courses in medical college. And since I've just completed my first time BBS, I am first going to be talking about courses that I took in M1. And as and when I feel comfortable talking about M2 courses, those videos are going to come up and so on and so forth. So since you guys can see from the title, this is going to be an, a video on how to study anatomy in medical college. Now since anatomy is such an important component of M1 and such a vast topic in itself, there is a lot to cover, I have a lot to talk about and I do not want this video to be a gazillion hours long. So let's get right into it. Um, before we go any further, I would like to add a small disclaimer that in this video I'm going to be talking about a lot of Indian authors. The reason being that the Indian uh, examination pattern in an Indian medical college is slightly different from the international uh, paper, international examination pattern. The reason be, uh, being that in India you're expected to write essay type answers for 10 marks or 4 marks in your internals and university exams, whereas internationally uh, the examinations and uh, question papers are of the MCQ standard. So since we are expected to write lengthy, long answers, essay type answers for uh, in our uh, exams, we need to study from textbooks that are not only going to explain the concept properly and help us grasp the concept, but are also going to be very easy to reproduce and you know easy to write. Uh, that are going to help us write answers in the exams. Therefore, uh, Indian authors are a very very important part of uh, an Indian medical student's life. Now. With, uh, let's you know jump right into the books and the resources that I used. So first we're going to be talking about textbooks. So uh, let's start with the Indian textbook. There is one Indian author that is the undisputed holy grail uh, medical anatomy textbook across India. No college in India recommends any other Indian author apart from this for anatomy. And that's right, I'm talking about the Red Bible of Anatomy, that is B.D. Charasya, or as we call it, the BDCs. Now, the reason why this book is so loved and, you know, recommended across the country is because this is written in such an easy-to-understand fashion. It's easy to understand. The diagrams are uh, easy to reproduce. The text is easy to reproduce for, you know, your examination purposes. And most importantly, the content is just right. It's not too much. It's not too less. It's just right for a medical uh, student. So if you're studying medicine in India, do not even look at any other Indian author. Just close your eyes, go to the bookshop and buy this. This is God. This book is that good. And you know, you can see from the binding, the binding is coming off. That's how much I've used these. So this uh, BDC comes in three volumes, all three of which we have to study in our first year. And as you can see, all three books are falling apart because I have used them so much. Anyway, so these are the textbook to use if you're studying medicine in India for an art and um, just study them cover to cover and if you can manage to understand and read this book properly, then half your battle is won. Forget half, your entire battle is won. This is what is going to get you through an art in first year, not just for your examination purposes, but will help you build your concepts too. So these books are great and if you're studying medicine in India, I'm going to be repeating this again and again. Close your eyes and study this. Do not refer any other book or, you know, I mean, use this as your primary resource, your primary textbook. Do not look at any other textbook because these books are God. Apart from this, if uh, you're looking for uh, foreign authors, you might be an international medical student or probably you are preparing for your USMLEs or PLABs or some other international uh, medical exams or maybe you have completed your topic from... Uh, BDC and now you want to uh, refer to some international author, I'm going to be uh, mentioning two foreign textbooks. One is the much raved about and much hyped book that's Grey's Anatomy. This is not the original Grey's Anatomy but the student's edition. The original Grey's Anatomy I believe is three times thicker but just look at how thick this is and this is a shortened version. Now this book is amazing. I have used this book for reference purposes throughout my first year and this really really you know strengthens your concept what you study from BDC if you have the time to go back and refer to this then this it's just gonna make your concepts rock solid it, this is a great great book and the hype over this is for a reason a lot of people believe that a medical student or a doctor's bookshelf is not complete without a Grey's Anatomy now if you do not want to buy this book I would suggest that at least download the PDF online or go to your libraries um, your medical libraries and refer to this book because this is great and I believe every first year should you know definitely use this uh, as a reference if not uh, the primary textbook I mean we uh, Indian students cannot because 
uh, BDC is our holy grail but do 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 use this as a reference and if you're studying for MLEs or preparing uh, doing your uh, medicine outside India and you're an international student then this is a great book. Apart from this, another foreign uh, textbook that I would like to talk about, and this is mostly for people uh, preparing for their MLAs, is uh, Keith L. Moore's Clinically Oriented Anatomy. Now, the reason why this book is so amazing for um, your step ones in your MLAs is because uh, most of you would know, and for those who do not know, Emily, uh, the question paper or the questions in MLE are in form of clinical vignettes, which means that whatever theory and knowledge you have gained, you need to know the clinical. Uh, importance of that and that is what this book is amazing in aptly called the clinically oriented anatomy not only is this a great textbook but this also every couple of pages has these blue boxes that have all the clinical correlation of the text accompanying it so this is a great book for um, uh, studying for step one and now that i'm in my second year and i'd be starting to soon prepare for my MLEs, this is a book that i will be uh, studying for my step one anatomy so if the reason why you're studying an ad is, uh, you know, to give your step ones, then go do uh, check this book out. This is really, really a good book. Apart from textbooks, another very important resource for studying anatomy is an, an atlas. Now, what is an atlas? An atlas is basically a book of illustrations and pictures uh, that are going to help you visualize whatever you're reading. Anatomy is basically the geography of the body. So if you're studying, let's say about the stomach and you're, you're studying the relations and nerves and art, arterial supply and whatnot, if you have a picture of it, a precise to the point picture of it, you can visualize it and then that, uh, that uh, results in you not having to mug up the information but you're able to understand what you're reading and so it becomes a concept and not just, you know, mugged up information that you're going to forget in a couple of days. So one uh, atlas that is raved about across the world is the Netter's Color Atlas of Human Anatomy. Now there are other atlases out there, there are lots of them, but this is considered the gold standard. This is the best atlas or that's what it's considered and I have personally used this and it has beautiful, beautiful illustrations very accurate and beautiful illustration so suppose you're studying about the brain you're studying about the circular villus keep this uh, diagram open next to you and what that's going to do is that you will not have to mug up the information but you can read it correlate it with this diagram so you can visualize the concept in your mind and therefore retain the knowledge for much much longer time and it becomes a concept in your mind and not just you know rote learning that you're going to learn today and forget tomorrow so do invest in a good atlas. Uh, the Netter's Atlas is slightly expensive, but if you can, I would really suggest you buy this because this book is amazing. If you can't, then uh, do go to your local libraries and refer to this because when you're studying anatomy, it's very, very essential that you have an atlas open along with your textbook because otherwise what's going to happen is that mm, you're going to learn the knowledge, uh, learn whatever text you studied today and forget it tomorrow because you did not visualize the concept and you know uh, understand it properly but just uh, learned it for the sake of learning another resource that i came across late into my mbbs but really really helped me are these is this pocket netters or the companion workbook now what this is is flashcards in a bound format now why is this important this is important because across the world one tool of testing anatomy is spotters what spotters are basically is that in a bunch of tables, there are going to be a bunch of specimens uh, with, and every specimen uh, or cadaver is going to have some structure tied or pinned along with the question. So you're supposed to go there and in a, um, uh, you know, a timed mode, you're supposed to identify the pinned structure and the tied structure and then answer the question, which means that not only should you have your concepts very clear, you're also expected to be able to identify all structures in the body. So what this does is that once I have completed the way I studied for my exams was that once I, once I completed my uh, one portion, I studied it from the textbook, I referred from Grace, and I uh, looked it up in letters. I would and I was sure that I have this concept down properly. I would open my pocket anatomy. Let's say I'm studying about the posterior abdominal wall. So I would open this diagram. And you see how the, a lot of structures are pointed with arrows, but they are not labeled. Num but instead, they are numbered. So what this is meant for is that you're supposed to look at this diagram 
and see how many structures you you can identify yourself the goal is to identify all of them the key is given on the next page so you know it's like it's an amazing tool for self assessment and since it's so small and handy you can like put it in your bag take it around with you anywhere and i would suggest that along with your netters atlas do buy a pocket net uh pocket netters Apart from this, another atlas that I used, and I know you guys will be thinking, "What? Another atlas? Why do you need two?" The reason is that Netters is a color atlas. It has beautiful, beautiful illustrations, but that's what those are illustrations. In Netters, uh, your veins are going to be blue, and arteries are going to be red, and nerves are going to be yellow. But our body and the cadavers are not really that color coded. So when you're actually in the dissection hall, you'll be able to realize that. the picture that you saw in netters though is a good representation of the real thing it's not the real thing so this is a clinical atlas now what a clinical atlas is that it contains a bunch of true cadaver prick pictures now this is mcmin and abraham's clinical atlas of human anatomy so what these guys did is that they went to the dissection hall and they photographed cadavers they did these are not illustrations these are not drawings these are real life cadavers and pictures now why is this important this is an amazing amazing tool for when you're studying for practicals the reason being that when i'm studying and i want to look up some structure and i want to see how it actually looks in the body every time it's very inconvenient for me to run to my dissection hall not not only is my di- is the dissection hall operation for a limited number of hours but it becomes very cumbersome if every time you're studying you keep having to go back to your dissection hall and search for you know a specimen and look at it so this makes it really easy you just open your mcmins or whatever um clinical atlas you're using let's say you're studying uh the palm so you open up your mcmins and uh you try to identify the structures in the palm from this because this is what your specimen is actually going to look like not like your netters illustration but like this so if you can uh before your practicals revise your portion from this then uh be rest assured that you're going to do very well and score good marks this book has helped me a lot in first year specifically you know before those reddit table tests and practicals uh when you know we were really scared that we wouldn't be able to identify specimens so if that is something that uh you know you do not want to mess up in i would suggest that along with the color atlas do invest in a clinical atlas or at least go and refer to it in your libraries now apart from that uh another very very important part of anatomy is dissection in itself now my college thankfully does not um allow or rather does not have ug students as medical students dissect the cadavers uh in my college the system is that our both graduate students would be dissecting the cadavers and in our dissection hall we go to the dissection hall and see the cadavers see the structures learn from them but we are not uh, physically dissecting it however if your college uh, requires you to dissect a cadaver which most colleges across most medical colleges across india do then uh, you need to invest in a practical manual and uh, a very amazing amazing uh, manual and an amazing author for that is cunningham's practical manual so this again co- comes in three volumes this is the volume 1 2 and 3 so as you can see this comes in three volumes based on you know the various parts and in case you have to dissect your own cadavers then i guess this is a great great tool because this will prevent you from butchering up your cadavers So make sure you buy these. Cunningham is considered a great, great practical manual. I'm sure there are others available in the market, but uh, this is the gold standard in that. Now, apart from that, um, anatomy also has a lot of sub courses such as osteology, embryology, histology, neuroanatomy. Now, embryo and histo are things that I'm uh, are courses that I'm going to be talking about in a separate video because they are very, very important subjects. and i do not want to club them in this video and undermine their importance however i would be talking about osteology and neuroanatomy because those two are basically considered an extension of gross anatomy so starting with osteology there are two resources that you mainly need a bone set and a textbook now the reason why you need a bone set is that suppose you have the bone physically in your hand while you're studying osteo you can feel for whatever tuberosity or ridges or condyles or you know a cellular process or malleoli or what not you're studying about so it is not just a text that you have to read and you know mug up but it becomes something that you can see you can feel and 
therefore that helps you to grasp it as an overall concept and not just you know two paragraphs that you need to mark up so i would suggest invest in a bone set uh, what uh, the common practice is that you get it from your seniors and then you pass it down to your junior however um, a lot of my classmates um uh, undermined the importance of buying a bone set did not buy it but come exam time they were all crammed up in our rooms you know trying to get their hands on the bone and feel for whatever they could because at the end of the day this is what you're going to be tested on nobody is going to ask you uh you know what a supinator crest is they're going to be uh, they're going to give you the bone and tell you show me where it is so i would say that you know do invest in a good bone set and you you can pass it on uh, to your juniors next year when you will not be requiring it but you will be requiring it in your first year apart from that uh, talking about textbooks of anat uh, osteology i would honestly suggest not buying a separate textbook because all gross anatomy textbooks have an osteology section for example this is bdc of upper limb the first chapter has the bones of upper limb so this is the scapula and then you have the humerus and then there are the ulna and radius and so basically all your anatomy textbooks have an osteology section be it grays be it mores be it bdcs however if you really are interested in the subject and you want to buy a separate textbook then something that i refer to when i studied from was ib singh in the beer uh, singh's osteology that's a really easy to read textbook it was really quick to read and i do i did purchase it but i have lent it to a friend so i don't have it right now to show you but i'm going to try and put up a picture of it here so personally i don't think you need an osteology textbook separately but if you really want to buy it then no uh, i be saying is a good book also the last sub course that i want to discuss in this video is neuroanatomy neuroanatomy is something that you're probably going to be studying uh, when you do your head and neck region so although neuroanatomy is something that is given in your bdcs and it's usually given in all anatomy textbooks i would suggest specifically for indian students to buy uh, human neuroanatomy by indrabir singh now the reason why you need to buy a separate textbook is that neuronat not just has a lot of uh, you know anatomy that you can see but it has a lot of aspects that can't be appreciated by the naked eye but exist and stuff that you need to know so all of that is not given very properly i i personally feel that it's not given very well in bdc so we were uh, recommended uh, this textbook in the veer singh's human neuroanatomy this is an amazing amazing textbook if for some people this happens to be too complex then you can also refer to another indian author called uh, vishram singh's neuroanatomy i'm going to try to link a picture of it here however i really believe that if you can read uh, neuroanatomy from this book then you really should because this is a much more wholesome book and um, you know it's going to make your concepts really that much stronger so this is a good book and you should definitely definitely buy this apart from that if neuronat is something that you're really really interested in you can invest in a snells neuronatomy or you can refer to it from your library but personally i think that's too much for ug level and uh, and indrabir singh's neuronatomy is more than sufficient so yeah that is it for this video um keep uh, keep a look out for the upcoming video the next video should be out fairly soon so keep a watch out for that thank you for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe